In this video we will apply the conservation of momentum principle to a collision to solve a problem. A 2.4 gram bullet is fired into a 24 kilogram block. The block is connected by a physics string to the ceiling as part of a ballistic pendulum for determining the muscle speed of a gun. This was actually a way that guns were measured a long time ago before we had fast photography. You would shoot a bullet into a very large block Hopefully it would not pass through as it is in this problem. It would stick in this block. And by measuring how high this went up, they'd be able to work backwards and determine the speed of this bullet, which was very fast and couldn't be measured directly. After the bullet hits the block, the bullet will pass through the block, and it has a speed of 100 meters per second in our particular problem. The block will swing up to a height of 2.75 meters as shown below. What is the speed of the bullet? Now, I was not told that this is an elastic collision, so I may not assume it. So, I cannot work a problem from here all the way to the block by using conservation of energy because I do not know if energy was conserved when it hit the bullet hit the block. Likewise, I can tell you linear momentum was not conserved because originally momentum was in this direction and when the block gets up to the end it has no momentum at all. So the momentum of the block is changing, it's changing because there's a net external force called the strain. What I have to do is break this problem into parts and I have to work small parts of it using concepts. So I'm only going to consider the very fraction of a second that the bullet was just about to hit the block. I'll call that little m, and this block I'll call big M. And this bullet was traveling at some speed, I'll call that V1. And this block was V2, and I'll call that, I guess, in both cases, initial. And V2 initial of the block was zero meters per second. Just before collision. And then the block will now have some velocity. I'll call that velocity V star. And the bullet will have some V1 final, which is 100 meters per second. This is big M again, and this is little m. And I'll draw a coordinate axis. So this is just after collision. So if the only thing you consider is the very small fraction of a second that the collision occurs, you can ignore other forces like air drag, gravity, and the wire of the pendulum. The only forces that are going to matter are the tremendously large forces of the collision. So we know that in the collision, collisions conserve linear momentum. And this is just a one-dimensional problem, so I only have x momentums. So I have the momentum of that bullet. I have any momentum the block has. I lost my one here, but it had none. And afterwards, I have a bullet traveling at V1F and I have a block traveling at V star. And I'm looking for V1F. I'm sorry, not V1F, V1I. So V1I, the initial velocity of the bullet, is dividing both sides by little m. The final velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the block divided by the mass of the bullet times V star. Well, I know this. It's 100 meters per second. I know this mass. I know the mass of the bullet. But I can't solve for this because I do not know the speed of the block after the collision. I'll call this equation 1. So my problem now changes. My problem now becomes how to find the speed of the block after the collision. Now what happened after the collision? After the collision to the block, the block swung up like a pendulum. 
and in that time there were two forces acting on it. One was the tension of the string, and one was gravity. Gravity is a conservative force. The tension of the string, I don't know if it's conservative or it's not, but what I do know is that the angle between this wire and that block is 90 degrees. So that block is being displaced in this direction and that tension is doing no work. So since that tension is doing no work, there is no work done by non-conservative forces. So we can say this, after collision, energy a block is conserved. So W N sub C is equal to E final minus E, and I'll call that star, the time in which it very beginning had the block. And there is no work by non-conservative forces, so E final equals E star. What does it have at the end? What it has is the mass of the block times gravity times the height. It has no kinetic because it's come to a stop. What it have when it started? One half the mass of the block times V star squared. I can cancel the mass of the block. I now have a way to find V star. V star is the square root of 2GH. I'll call this equation 2. I substitute 2 into 1. So V1I is now V1F plus the mass of the block or the mass of the bullet times the square root of 2GH. And I have all of these quantities now so I can now punch my calculator and find the answer to this problem. So I'll get my calculator out. Of course have to make sure that I use the correct numbers from the problem. So let's see. I know that the initial velocity of this is 100 meters per second. Plus, I need the mass of the block in the problem. Let's see what the mass of the block in the problem was. Mass in the block was 24 kilograms. Now we can write that in kilograms or we can do it in grams. So 24,000 grams divided by, I think it said 2.4 grams. Yeah. 2.4 grams. Grams cancel. So that's a factor of 10,000. And then times the square root, I have to write underneath because I don't have enough room, 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times the height, and the height it went up to was 2.75 meters. 2.75 meters. So I need to punch all of that. So let's see here. We got square root of 2 times 9.8 times 2.75 times 10,000. And then I need to add 100. And I get 73,517 meters per second. And this is obviously an unreasonable thing. That was one heck of a fast bullet, okay? So a real bullet would not be traveling at that speed. It would not knock this block up this high. But the point being is that the bullet lost most of its speed. So while it was an incredibly fast object, after it hits this, it's a much slower object. And all I got to do is measure the height that this pendulum swings to determine this tremendous speed. This is known as the synthesis problem. You've had to apply multiple concepts from multiple chapters to work this problem. 
This is what you want to be able to do is to get to that ability. That is the key for an AP type course to be able to solve problems. The real world requires you to put a lot of things together to work a problem, not just one concept to plug into a formula. If it's just plugging into a formula, you can teach a computer to do it. You don't need a human being. But it takes a human being to think their way through a problem, break it into parts, and solve it. If you can do that, you have a job marketable skill. And you have the ability to do physics or engineering, medicine, or whatever else that you would like to do in your career. All right, I'll finish part B, which is to determine how much work was done by the block upon the bullet without knowing the force in this collision. I'll do that on the next video.